Het werd een vrolijke bijeenkomst die, voordat we officieel begonnen, een uiterst intrigerende opmerking opleverde over Amsterdam en bananen. Je kunt ook wel dingen met Amsterdam doen. Ja, maar hoe zou je willen hebben? Bananen? Ik kan het in de woord doen. Ja, speciaal. Ik wist niet dat je dingen met bananen kon doen until ik naar Amsterdam ging. Je bent in deze famous bar, of niet? Oh, niet alleen de bar. Kunnen we een donkey hebben? Ja, we hebben altijd grote tours van dat area. You talk to each other this morning to wear black or not? No, no, How does we actually just wore black. <laughs> Call it ESP, I don't know. <laughs> it's the feeling of the day to wear black or not. Yeah, yeah it's a, a Beatle period. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it started in the fourth decade of your career, you finally started the Beatle period. Well, it's all going round, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Well, when a physician wins a Nobel Prize, he doesn't stop doing his research, but mm. you have so much uh, creativity. Where does this creative uh, restlessness come from? Ooh. Don't know. I think we've just always been in love with, with pop music. I think, uh, even since when we were children, it just seemed very instinctive. Um, we started when I was about nine and Maurice and Robin were about six. Yes. And we made an agreement between ourselves that this is what we were going to do with our lives. And, yeah. But you still want to conquer the world. That's the impression we have. Um, yeah. I don't well, know if that's what we want. I think what we mm, just want nice, is to go on making music. <laughs> Probably not to conquer the world. We'd like to conquer the world. <laughs> why not? Yeah, why not? Yes. If, if we talk about your characters, who, who were uh, the terror ones when you were young? Uh, Robin mm. was pretty outrageous when we were young. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That changed or not? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think he's, he's, just, he's very turbulent. Inside now. Yeah, I'm a very right. turbulent character. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't come out anymore. He likes to shock people. Yeah, it usually comes out in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes in the studio too. <laughs> yes. It's this shock factory he likes yes. to do. And how about Maurice's character? Oh, I was the boozer socialite. Yes. Yeah, definitely the clubber. Yeah. Mm. You once stole a bottle of orange juice in your youth, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the only crime I ever did, and I got nicked. Yeah. <laughs> yes, because they never got nicked. No, they yeah. did lots of things, but yeah. they got they nicked got eventually. Yeah. 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 Was it, what does that say about them? They're cleverer than you are? No, I was, I was Mr. Goody Two Shoes, you know. <laughs> I, was, I was too scared. Yeah. It was empty at the time, fortunately. There were people looking after the house, but stay on the outside of the house. But there was nobody in the house proper when she got in, so. But she drove 140 miles to get there? She, she was, was determined. Yes, was, yes. yes, it was prepared with military precision, like yes. I said. Very much so, yeah. Uh, uh, was it clear what she wanted to do there? Oh, I think so. I think she was. No, I think it's pretty clear to anybody, <laughs> really. She, she seems to have had a video camera with her, or. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm not sure what she, her intentions were because I had to be careful try, accusing people. But they did. She did have a plastic bag with a carpet knife, some rope, and a video camera. And I don't know what she was going to do. <laughs> Go figure. A couple of horses in the carriage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're not sure. Is your body at this age always doing what your minds want to? Hmm. No, I don't think so. Excuse me. I, 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 <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't run anymore. If that's your question, <laughs> I tend to walk with a sort of a smooth jaw. Well, we sort of stay pretty healthy. Yeah. <laughs> I think mentally we're, just, we're, we're probably uh, in our prime, mm. and um, you know when uh, I'm 50, and I'm very happy to be 50, I think it's a nice, nice time of life for me. And uh, Mo and Rob are three years younger than me, so they've yet to experience the big 5-0, you know. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's fun. I, I was watching Rod Stewart on television a couple of weeks back, and he was talking about being 52, and, and how comfortable he was with his age, and it didn't, it didn't bother him, you know. And it, I don't think it bothers me. I, your, your body doesn't do the things you want it to do. No. But there, you know, there's a, there's a couple of parts of my body that are as good as they ever were. <laughs> and sometimes there's no controlling them, isn't there? Absolutely yeah. not. <laughs> no obsessive thing, you'll find out. <laughs> de oudere broer Barry en de jongere tweeling. Vraag is, hoe zien ze zichzelf? 
I was a tosser. <laughs> <laughs> <No>, <laughs> <laughs> is that enough as a justification well, for being Well, there's a difference here? between being a Pratt and being a tosser. Yeah, it takes practice. Being a Pratt, you can go to heaven, but if you're a tosser... <laughs> <laughs> no. What um, would be your answer then? <laughs> my answer. Um, I came and I went and in between was padding. <laughs> in de loop van een eindeloze carrière hebben de Bee Gees veel tegenslag overwonnen. In dit opzicht heeft vooral Morris een verhaal te vertellen. De Bee Gees met die sinds zijn eerste haaruitval onvermijdelijke hoed. Hij was jarenlang zwaar aan de drank, maar overwon zijn bijna fatale alcoholverslaving. Now, for example, can we learn from the fact that you won your uphill battle against alcohol? Well, the basic thing to learn is that life's incredibly beautiful without it, you know. But some people can say no. I, could, I couldn't, you know. So it's, it's, it was different for me. But a lot of people, and especially during the first fame thing we were talking about earlier, you know, I mean, that's what, when I started doing all that, you know, because I was a social. I could, be, I could go anywhere and do that because it was legal, and it still is. Yeah. You know, but in my case, uh, when, you have to, when you have to drink just, just to function, you know, just to get up in the morning, then it's, there's something going on, you know. But it was an uphill battle. It was, but I had a lot of friends. And I do go to AA. I go to a meeting every day yeah. and things like that. So that's my support system that I always like to have. And I don't have to go to them. I get to go to them, which is totally different. You know, so. What do you teach your children in this respect? Because you come from a world with a reputation of sex, drugs and rock and roll. Mm -hmm. There has been a part of drugs in your <laughs> career as well. They never told us that. They never told us that. <laughs> <laughs> well, my children, for instance, learn from me. I mean, they, they, cause it, when this kind of, of thing that happens to you affects your whole family. I mean, what you do affects everybody, as it affected my brothers, everything that I did. It's like the proverbial pebble in the pond, you know, the ripple effect. Yes. And I was a brick, <laughs> so it was waves, you know. So they got help too, but they learned about it. But we're very blessed with our children that they, they haven't gone into that world. Is the main concern for you as well? Of course. Um, I think you're always watching your children to look for those signs. And, uh, um, and Miami is a very, um, what should we call it? It's a beautiful place, but it has decadence. And, and there's South Beach, and there's this whole fashion center and show business center there. Uh, the, so there's a lot of temptations, a lot of drugs. Um, um, that the, and, and you have teenage kids, you've got, to, you've got to watch out for that because that's where they want to go. And they want to party, and, um, mm. and they very much follow their, uh, their peers, and they get, uh, they get out of control. And so you really do have to be yeah. You have to be a parent in every sense if you can. But, but you can teach them from your own experience. You can try. Yeah. Well, you that can, helps. We've always of said you, we've always said you can point out the potholes in life if they want to step in them. <laughs> There's nothing yeah, you can do about it. They will know? leave. You know, they will leave yeah. home, and, and at some point they won't listen to you no matter what. So. It was a bomb for all of us when when he wasn't there anymore. How did your father cope with that? Was it very badly? Yeah. Yeah. He was yeah. I think it was worse for our father than it was for any of us. I mean, yeah. for a parent, I think the youngest. Uh, losing the, your youngest child, I think, is a devastating thing. Well, it's a different kind of grief from losing your younger brother, yeah. you know, that the parents went through. Which we learned about. So, and yeah. you could not help him? No. no. You tried, tried. to? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. In what respect did you try? Well, we spoke to him a lot. We gave him a lot of support. Mm. And it wasn't just something that happened on the spur of the moment. It was for years of... Uh, yeah, we tried uh, to help Andy. Yeah. We tried to help our father. Yeah. We tried to help Andy. Of course we did. Mm. Yeah. We tried intervention. We tried everything. You know? And your mother was still alive? Yeah. Oh, yes. And living... Yes. In Las Vegas. She's no, here right she's now. She's in the kitchen. She's here. She's <laughs> in the kitchen making tea, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's a strong lady. <laughs> so what comes to your mind when you hear the word Holland? Ah, oh, freedom. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, some of our, some of, some, uh, some of our uh, greatest fans live in Holland. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of uh, Dutch fans. And, um, Wonderful very memories. Very warm, very warm for you. Yeah. Yeah, and bananas come to your mind? Bananas, <laughs> bananas, bananas of course. Cookies. I mean, you haven't been out. You, you cannot look at a banana after going to Amsterdam, I'm telling you. <laughs> it gives a whole different light to see. You've been given most of the answers. Is it also because no, you, uh, you're still the oldest? I just love to hear my own voice. <laughs> <laughs> He's in love with himself. Yes. Is he? Oh, yes. Uh, I think yeah. we all are. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're all in love with ourselves. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I suit myself once. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Great. <laughs> you all feel privileged that you can. Live the life you're living here. I mean, we could have the been mass born, approval. You know. Out of all the billions of people on this earth, we could have been born as three plumbers. We could have had a plumbing business. <laughs> you know, we, it could have been Barry Rowan Morris. We, we could our slogan could have been plumbers. plumbers yeah. It could have been Danny Boy Plumbing. <laughs> Danny Boy Plumbing. The pipes are calling. Yeah. That could have been our slogan. Yeah. You know, I mean, we could have just been all electricians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. To conclude the interview, give me some first reactions to some names. Okay. Barbara Streisand. Oh. Wonderful. Oh, uh, professional. Australia. Gorgeous. Youth. 
You don't have any, Rob? Oh, I thought you were just... <laughs> <laughs> he fell asleep already. I thought you were just looking for one of us for uh, alcohol. Deadly. Yeah. yeah. John Lennon. Shot. Hero. Andy. Sad. 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 Yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you. I thought you were going to mention cross-dressing. <laughs> <laughs> cross-dressing. Impossible.